Okay, I have a piece of 2 tenths inch Pyrex tubing, standard wall tubing mounted in the chuck. On this side and in our wire holder, I've got our filament uh, wires that we just prepared. They're aligned so that um, we can just run them up inside the tube when we're ready. Okay, first, we have to drive the air out of the tungsten. When, when tungsten wire is manufactured, um, it's drawn through a die, and in that process, air gets trapped into the surface of the tungsten. Well, if we just were to make the pinch without driving that air out, then the, the air would be heated up and it would, it would expand and form bubbles in the glass, and that would, that would make leaks. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat the tungsten to um, yellow heat to drive that air out of there. I'm just going to use the small tip, and we'll just go ahead and play that on there, being very careful not to overheat it and melt our uh, nickel wires. The tungsten wires won't melt with the torch, but the nickel wires and the copper wires will melt quite easily. So we have to be very quickly, uh, very quick with the torch to uh, just heat up the tungsten. It just has to flare. It doesn't have to be, be quite hot for periods of time. I'm just going to do this for a few seconds to drive the air out. It doesn't take an awful lot. Okay, that should do it. Now, moving the glass tubing up, and I'm putting the nickel wires to where they're just inside the glass tubing so that when we, when we heat them up, we'll just pinch it and grab them. Now, we're going to use the double-sided torch for going ahead and making the pinch with the masher so that I don't melt them when I'm heating the glass. If that torch hits that wire, it'll melt them in one nanosecond. I mean, it just will go right through. Okay, I'm going to squish it down. Now, I've made the squish only on the end to grab the wires and keep them in position. Now I'm going to heat it up and do the actual pinch that seals the glass onto the um, tungsten. Do a very hard pinch on it. Now I'm going to catch the electrode wires. Now I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Just heating it up to just cause the glass to pull in a little bit. We'll trim it up with the Dremel tool afterwards. Okay, and that's our pinch. I'm going to look at that with a magnifying glass to make sure that it looks good. Okay, next we're going to do our flare. We're going to make the seal on a flare. This is the flare that we made just a while back. Now, the flare holding tool we just have a piece of aluminum and it has two arms on it that are spring-loaded. And we've got a little notch cut in the end so that when we fit the flare in there, it just holds it. Very, very simple. They're little channel-shaped uh, pieces of metal. You make them on a sheet metal break. Okay. We have our flare, our flare mounted in the flare tool, and we have our uh, electrodes that we made just a while back mounted in the wire holder. The lathe holds them perfectly in alignment while we work on it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drive the oxygen out of the, or air out of the uh, tungsten first, just like we did before in the filament ones. Okay, that looks good. I've got about an eighth of an inch up into the end of the flare. The lathe holds them perfectly aligned. It would be almost impossible to do this without the lathe. You, you could probably make up a fixture of some kind, but the lathe really makes it good. Okay, I'm going to preheat this a little bit. We don't have to preheat Pyrex a lot. Now we just play the torch on it a little until it starts to flare, and that's enough. If it was soft glass, you have to go through quite a, uh, you have to be pretty careful. Okay, we warm the end up, squish it down, and that grabs the three wires, and that's got them in place. Now we're going to heat it up and do the actual seal onto the, onto the tungsten. Mm -hmm. 
I do a really hard pinch when I do that. Squish it really hard because we want it to completely surround the tungsten. Now I'm going to grab the electrode. Okay, now I'm going to clean it up. With the magnifying glass to make sure we've got a good seal. Okay, here we have our, our flare and we're going to go ahead and first we're going to make our grid. Get that long piece of wire out of the way here. Okay, I'm going to bend the plate leads off to the side. Um, the plate mounts off to the side so we're going to just bend those out of the way. Being very careful not to put any stress on the glass because you shatter that glass and we have to you know, probably remake it. Now to make the grid I'm just going to grab it and we'll bend it over. Now the grid in the audion is just that zigzag wire so I'm just going to make it about uh, half inch wide to five eighths inch wide. I'm just going to bend it back. Okay, that's the first part. Grab it here. Okay. Straighten that out a little bit right there. Okay, we'll grab it right over the other one. Most of these tubes, uh, the, the audience were made by quite a few different people. The McClendis made most of them. However, there were a bunch of people that were really making them when, when they were uh, in the heyday. And, uh, you know, so you, you didn't really have uh, an absolute for how many zigzags and the spacing of the zigzag. That was part of the trouble of the old early audience is there, there wasn't any uniformity to them. It was just whoever was making them did them the way they uh, the way they felt, and that was it. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's going to be it. Make it five or make it six. I think five is enough. Just cut the end off. Okay, now we're going to flatten that out and put it exactly vertical. Okay, and there's our grid. Piece of, this is just some metal that came off of an old vacuum tube. I just, I just took a plate out of an old vacuum tube and hammered it out flat. And we're just going to cut our plate out of that. I'm just going to trim the side nice and straight and even. And we're going to make it about a half inch square. Up to about right there. And about Right there, and that's going to be our plate. Now, some of the tubes had the corners lopped off, some of them didn't. You know, once again, it was just uh, who did it, and um, it just some of them had the corners cut cutely, and some of them just left them square. Okay, now the old audience did not have the leads welded onto them. They used a crimp. So we'll go ahead to make this one look right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drill two small holes here for our crimp wires and that way we're going to make it look more like a real audit rather than use the welder to weld it in. Okay, I've just drilled two holes that are 20 mils in diameter and um, those will be for our support wires. Okay, I'm going to bend the wires to the right position. Okay. See where we're going to bend them. Slip the plate onto it. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to come up. Coming up with them. The exact position is not important right at the moment. We'll adjust the position after we get the plate mounted. Okay, now we're going to come out. Okay, I see right where the hole has to go, so I'm going to hold it right here. Come out with it, straight out. Okay, and do the other one. Eh. Okay, so that gives us just a little zigzag in there. And when we put our plate on there, it's being held on there. Okay, I'm going to hold, clamp it tight, and we'll bend that down. Clamp the other one, and bend it down. We'll lop them off to where they'll be out of the way. And now, I'm just going to take them and squish them. Okay, being very careful. Alright, that's pretty good. I'm going to take this one, get it into place, get both of them partially squished before I do the final squish. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the final squish on each one to really clamp it. Yeah. All right, that's good. And the other one. Okay, the plate is now crimped on. Okay, the next thing we do is we very carefully, being careful not to put stress on the glass, I'm going to keep my thumbnail pushed firmly against the wire when I'm bending it into place here so that I don't put force on that glass. And I'm just going to work it up very carefully. And we don't want to crack the glass at this time. I mean, we were so close to having a good one. Okay, that gets the plate sticking straight up. Now, the grid's a little bit uh, at an angle. So I'll just bend it over and bring it vertical. Okay, there we have our grid and our plate. Now it's a little bit low, so I'm going to open that grid up a little bit. That gives us our grid and our plate. And that'll sit up inside there like that. Okay, um, that's the cutoff point for the 15 minute limit of YouTube. Um, our next in part three, we will begin with making the filament.